May the peace of the Lord be with you all, as we bring to you the readings of today's Holy Mass. Let us now listen to the Word of God. June 2, 2023, Friday of the Eighth Week in Ordinary Time. A reading from the Book of Sirach. Let us praise the men of glory and our ancestors in their generation. But for some of them, there is no memorial. They have passed away as if they had never existed, and they have become as if they had never been born, and their sons along with them. But these were men of mercy, whose pious deeds have not failed. Good things continue with their offspring. Their descendants are a holy inheritance, and their offspring stand firm in the covenants. And because of them, their sons remain even unto eternity. Their offspring and their glory will not be forsaken. The Word of the Lord Responsorial Psalm The response is, The Lord takes delight in His people. Sing to the Lord a new song. His praise is in the Church of the Saints. Let Israel rejoice in him who made them, and let the sons of Zion exult in their king. The Lord takes delight in his people. Let them praise his name in chorus. Let them sing psalms to him with the timbrel and the psaltery. For the Lord is well pleased with his people, and he will exalt the meek unto salvation. The Lord takes delight in his people. The saints will exult in glory. They will rejoice upon their couches. The exaltations of God will be in their throat. This is glory for all his saints. Alleluia. The Lord takes delight in his people. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. And he entered into Jerusalem, into the temple. And having looked around at everything, since it was now the evening hour, he went out to Bethania with the twelve. And the next day, as they were departing from Bethania, he was hungry. And when he had seen a fig tree with leaves in the distance, he went to it, in case he might find something on it. And when he had gone to it, he found nothing but leaves. For it was not the season for figs. And in response, he said to it, From now on and forever, may no one eat fruit from you again. And his disciples heard this. And they went to Jerusalem. And when he had entered into the temple, he began to cast out the sellers and the buyers in the temple. And he overturned the tables of the money changers and the chairs of the vendors of doves. And he would not permit anyone to carry goods through the temple. And he taught them, saying, Is it not written? For my house shall be called the house of prayer for all nations? But you have made it into a den of robbers. And when the leaders of the priests and the scribes had heard this, they sought a means by which they might destroy him. For they feared him because the entire multitude was in admiration over his doctrine. And when evening had arrived, he departed from the city. And when they passed by in the morning, they saw that the fig tree had dried up from the roots. And Peter, remembering, said to him, Master, behold, the fig tree that you cursed has withered. And in response, Jesus said to them, Have the faith of God. Amen I say to you, that whoever will say to this mountain, Be taken up and cast into the sea, and who will not have hesitated in his heart, but will have believed, then whatever he has said be done, it shall be done for him. For this reason, I say to you, all things whatsoever that you ask for when praying, believe that you will receive them, and they will happen for you. And when you stand to pray, if you hold anything against anyone, forgive them, so that your Father, who is in heaven, may also forgive you your sins. But if you will not forgive, neither will your Father, 
who is in heaven, forgive you your sins. The Gospel of the Lord Reflection How can I cultivate authentic and manifest holiness in my life, to satiate the hunger in the heart of our Lord, when He inspects the fig tree of my soul? And the next day, as they were departing from Bethania, he was hungry. And when he had seen a fig tree with leaves in the distance, he went to it, in case he might find something on it. And when he had gone to it, he found nothing but leaves. For it was not the season for figures. And in response, he said to it, From now on and forever, may no one eat fruit from you again. And his disciples heard this. Mark 11 verses 12 to 14. This is a very unique and interesting story. The first thing this tells us is that, Jesus was fully human. As a man, he was hungry. But this story tells us much more than the simple fact, that Jesus was hungry. He would have known that it was not the season for figs to grow, but he decided to look for a fig anyway. And when he found none, he cursed the fig tree, and as we read later in this chapter, the tree withered and died. This was a symbolic action for the sake of his disciples, in that his disciples heard him curse the tree, and later saw that the tree had withered. Saint Bede, an early church father, tells us that this action of Jesus had an allegorical purpose. The tree is symbolic of the many people Jesus encountered, and continues to encounter today, who failed to bear good fruit in their lives. They were the Pharisees and others who practiced their faith only in an external way. The leaves, St. Bede tells us, were symbolic of the externals of the faith, and the lack of fruit, was a symbol of the missing interior fruit of holiness and good works. This lesson tells us that Jesus is very demanding. He is determined to discover good fruit in our lives. He wants us to become authentically holy. And when he finds only the externals, he will rebuke us in love, taking even the externals away. What good fruit does our Lord want to find in your life? How does he want you to manifestly grow in holiness? Do you go through the motions, attend mass, say some prayers, but fail to produce an abundance of virtue, compassion, mercy and goodness? Do you say you believe in our Lord, but then fail to preach the Holy Gospel with both your words and your actions? If our Lord were to come to you, as he came to this fig tree, what would he find? Being a Christian is not something that is exclusively between you and God. Being a Christian requires that you be so given over to the service of God, and others that God is able to do incredible things through you. The Christian faith must produce good fruit in your life, and through you in the lives of others. And it must do so in an abundant way. Reflect today, upon the holy image of Jesus walking over to this fig tree, inspecting it for a figure. See this tree as an image of your soul, and see the hunger in the heart of our Lord. As he looks at you in your life, will he be satiated? Will he find holiness and manifest good works? Or will he find little to nothing other than external claims that you are a Christian? Commit yourself to an abundance of authentic and manifest holiness, and our Lord's hunger will be satiated. Let us pray. My demanding Lord, you call all your followers to a holiness that is lived, transforming, manifest and fruitful for your kingdom. Help me to be a Christian not only in name, but especially in action. May my life truly bear the good fruit of holiness, and may that holiness become a means, by which you feed the spiritual hunger of your people. Jesus, I trust in you. Amen. Thank you for listening to the readings and reflection of today's Mass. 
Please like, subscribe, and share with your family and friends. Again, thank you, and may God bless us all.